I want to start out this week by saying thank you. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has called us to do, what he's commissioned this ministry to do, and that is to give his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness away on this podcast six days a week. And we always do it through his word. God's word is the key. I he, It is the key to overcoming anything in, in God's people's lives. I'm, I'm going to tell you something today. I, I've, I struggled for years and years not knowing that that the every answer that I had would ever need was in inside the covers of God's word. And and he has he has commissioned me to do this. This is week twenty four in a study in in Second Corinthians. And we are we are endeavoring to to help people come to realize and understand that that this world is is a, is a place that if you're not careful you'll get in trouble in it and even even in 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 places where you think there there ought to be help I, I'm gonna tell you something God God wants to help people in this world today and He'll always do it through the truth in His Word and if there's no word in in a in a in a, uh, a place you don't need to be there. That's the reason we do this podcast six days a week because we want this the word the word of God to go out so so that 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 people can get hold of and be strengthened by what God is wanting them, them to know and understand. That's what I'm. I say thank you for all that you're doing. Partners, there's a there's a big need out here in this world, and you're help helping us to fill that need. I pray Mark ten twenty nine and thirty over you today, over everything that you sow into this ministry. Uh, if 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 you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into this ministry or some other ministry that is helping people be strong in this world today through Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Not through religion, not through smoke and mirrors, not through a bunch of, of, of feelings, but through the truth in God's Word. I said this the other night at, at our weekly uh, videoing of, of our In Him Scripture study that goes into the prisons on the tablets. I said this the other night. I said, listen, you, you got to understand something today that we need to realize that you can accomplish and overcome anything through the truth in God's Word. And if you'll get a hold of it and use it, God will lead you and guide you and help you, strengthen you and help you to see and understand that He's real. He's for you, not against you. And that's the reason we do this podcast six days a week, because we want people to realize and understand that God's Word is out there for you to live in, to live by, to walk in, and be strong in. It's God's Word that will carry you through life. It's God's Word that will strengthen you in your life. Won't you listen and understand today that God's Word is there for you. It's there for you to help you be strong in Him. Not in religion, not in how good you are, not how and how strong you are physically, but how you are, how you stand and live in Christ Jesus. That's where the strength comes. Living in Him and finding out what God's Word says about you in your salvation. I struggled for a lot of years in my life because I didn't know what Christ had made me to be in the salvation that he had given me so many years before that. I thank God today that he's for me today, and he and He proves that to me and shows that to me through his word. So let's, see, let's, let's take this week and grow strong in who we are in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, the Ephesians were very prominent in Paul's desire to see 
them strengthened. I mean, he, he, he had a concern for the Ephesians. And that's the reason I do these, these Ephesians prayers. I've adopted these prayers for the world we live in, for every person that walks face this planet, including myself, so that they can realize and understand the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God has for them, how much God loves them, how much he wants them to know it. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made, will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now glory to God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God. Oh, for what he has shown me over the years. His love and His mercy and His grace and His goodness, and it always comes through His Word. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I praise You and I thank You, God, for Your Word. Guide me. Use me for Your honor and Your glory, and I'll forever give You all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty four and 25. Let me read this. I'm going to read this kind of backwards today. I'm going to read uh, 24 and 25 in the Amplified Classic first. It says, Five times I received from the hands of the Jews 40 lashes, 40 lashes all but one. In other words, 39 lashes. Three times I have been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I have been aboard a ship wrecked. And in uh, at sea, a whole night and a day I spent adrift on the deep. Talking about in, in the in the sea, that the New Living Translation says five times the Jewish leaders gave me thirty nine lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. Let me read the, the King James. It says, Of the Jews five times received I forty lashes, save one. Talking about thirty-nine lashes. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwrecked. A, a day and a night, a, a, a night and a day I have been I have been in the deep. Talking about being shipwrecked and adrift at sea. Let me explain something to you. He Paul suffered a lot. We talked about this yesterday, but we go. We, you want to go back through here and and talk about what five different times he was he was uh, beaten. I'm talking about uh, striped, beaten with lashes, 
thrice or uh, uh, 40, 40 lashes, 40 stripes. Yeah, they say, or 39 stripes, they say 40, 40 lashes would kill a person. So they beat him five times up to the point of death and then let him live. That's cruel. I, I, I don't care what you say. That's cruel for anyone. He says, three times I was beaten with rods. And I read a little bit about that and heard, heard a, a, a teacher talk on it one time, said that when they beat somebody with a rod, they beat the bottoms of their feet. Beat them where they, you know, just beat their, bro, broke their feet up. And, and just, I'm talking about these people suffered. Paul suffered to make sure that what God had commissioned him to do, he done. Now, we don't have to deal with that today. I don't, I've never met anyone that has has suffered like Paul did. Hey, you won't meet somebody that has suffered like Jesus did. But there's something about a man like like Paul that went through so much in his life. He was, was shipwrecked. It says three times. Uh, let's see, three times I have been aboard a ship wrecked at sea. A whole night and a day I spent adrift on the deep. You know, Paul went through so much, yet he, he was never deterred from what he what God wanted him to do. And that is to teach us where we stood with God through Christ Jesus. Like, like I say, he took 39 lashes five separate times, beaten up to the point of death five separate times, and still got up and went right back to doing what was getting him beaten for to start with. And that was to teach us where we stand with God through the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior made. See, there's, there's, a, there's a difference there's a lot of people out here talking about what what you can do to grow to draw closer to God. <laughs> and and Jesus said one commandment I give you and that is love. Love God and love each other. And you, and look here, if you love me, you're not going to hurt me in any way shape or form. Now that's the truth. I if I love you, I'm not going to hurt you in any way shape or form. And and if you want to and Paul said it but Paul said it. He said, "Oh, no man anything but to love one another. In other words, be in debt to every person on this planet. For what? For love. For God's love. God, God gave us that love not to keep for ourselves, but to give away, to help someone else be strong, to, to show somebody, someone God's love and his mercy and his grace and his goodness through his love. His mercy. Paul had to have a enormous love in his heart for what what uh, what Jesus had done, or he would have given up and quit. I thank God that that he done what he done and give us God's word. You see, uh, this word. You say, well, these are Paul's epistles, and yeah, they are. But the Holy Spirit spoke through Paul to give us what we need to live this Christian life and walk this, this walk that we're called to walk. I'm going I'm to say this. If, if you want to be strong, if you want to be strong, live in, study, spend the most of your time. Now, I'm not talking about uh, completely forgetting about the four Gospels and the Old Testament. Look, read the book, study the book. Speak the book out loud so you can hear it. But it, put your the majority of your study time into the epistles, they, because the epistles were were written to show us how to live this Christian life, this born again Christian life. It, they were written so that we could live strong in who Christ has made us to be, not in the law, not in our accomplishments, not in how good we can be. Paul was, I'm talking about, beaten and, and suffered a lot because of what he was teaching, but it, it, was, it was meant to 
pull us through and and help us to see that my goodness, you know, Jesus has has redeemed us from the curse of the law, from the curse of of all the junk that the law brought forth brought forth to, to us. I asked him last night. They, I asked him. I said, "What was the law put here on this earth for? What was it here for? What was our, God's law put here for? It was put here to show mankind a dire need of a savior because mankind can't live through this law. He he can't uh, he can't fulfill the law. You'll always fall short. Jesus was the one that done everything right, and then he turned around and died." died so with so that we could all walk free and and that is something that religion uh steers people away from because religion wants you to to uh be indebted to it i don't i'm not out here preaching religion i'm not out here preaching how good that you can be i'm out here preaching how good he is and you can live in that goodness and you can live according to what Jesus said, what Paul taught. To live to be, to know that you're sanctified and you're a new creature. You're the righteousness of God, not because you've you done anything, but have faith in Jesus Christ and what He done. And what He done, I guarantee you, will make you righteous. It does make you righteous. Why? Because you're in Him. You're in Him. And you're the same overcomer that Jesus talked about in John sixteen thirty three. He said, I've given you these words. I've spoken these words to you so that you might have in me, might have peace. In Christ Jesus, that you might have peace. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Paul went through a lot. But he always he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't go out here and and try to make himself any any more than anybody else. No, he got he went out and gave God all the glory, all the honor for everything. God wants us to understand something today that if we'll believe Him, believe His word, and stand in who we are in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we can be a light and help to this world. Paul was a was an instrument that God used to to bring us these epistles so we could live in them. Like I said, spend the majority of your study time in Paul's epistles in the the latter part of the New Testament so that you can come to realize and understand where you stand in him in Christ Jesus. God is God is a lot bigger than we will ever realize until we start realizing where we stand with him. And when you start realizing uh, where you stand with God, you, you'll you start realizing what he wants to do in your life. And he wants to do big things in your life. He wants to be a, a, a help to you so that you can be a help to somebody else. But, but I'm going to ask you a question today. I'm going to ask you a very important question today. You know, Jesus died on the cross, took a, took took uh, took our our sin upon Him, and was punished and died on the cross for for our sins, and was raised on the third day for our justification. I, but I want to ask you a question: Have you ever made Him Lord of your life? Have you ever been born again? Have you ever been saved? Because God wants to save you today. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It don't say you might be if you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's just right. No, it says if you'll confess Jesus as Lord of your life and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You are saved. It says, where with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. Come to Jesus today. Make him Lord and Savior of your life. 
to ask him to come into your heart and into your life and be your Lord and Savior. Confess him. Say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior today. I proclaim him as Lord and Savior today and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead to justify me and everybody else on this planet. And then find out, get in this study with us, get in this in this uh, podcast, get in God's Word, and find out who that salvation has made you to be in Christ Jesus. Not in your good, good works, not in anything like that, but who you are in Him, in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch Him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, I, I mentioned this yesterday, but I done the the, uh, the numbers on our approvals in, in jails and prisons all over this nation. Right now, we're at 919 that we're approved. We're approved in. And, and oh, there's, there's companies. There's one company right now. They told me, they couldn't tell me how many they had, but they told me they've got tens of thousands. It's a nationwide company. I, I, I've, uh, they're right now, sent, they've sent my information to the people that do the programming to get me on there. And uh, I'm just waiting on them to contact me and call me back and, and so I can find out, you know, what it takes to get on these tablets because there's tens of thousands of them. Had another company here just the other day and told me, he said, he said, we're going to get you on these tablets. 700,000 tablets they've got in circulation. That's a third of the prison population in this nation in one company. And I thank God that we're about to go on there uh, at the end of this year the last quarter of this year, they, they said they're going to start putting content back on these tablets, and we're going on there. Oh, I thank God for it. So y'all pray about that. Pray about it. Go to our website. If you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for what you're doing, helping us do just this. Just uh, I'm talking about putting this podcast out all over the world for people to hear. Not only the prisons and the jails, but all over the world for the people of this world to grow strong in who they are in Jesus Christ. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. Take this phone app and use it. Use it to be to draw strength from God's Word. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com.